what we're going to do today is I want to show you some ways to manage, save your citations, um, keep track of all of that as you are gathering your sources. So we're going to start with um, setting up an EBSCOhost account. How many of you have done that already? Okay, I was hoping some of you had, but we're going to start and make sure everybody's got that set. Um, that's not where I need to go. Um, so let's start with the education search interface. So who can tell me one of two ways that I would get there? I needed to go to the education search interface. It's one of the databases. From the library, From the library page, library. yes. Um, if I, databases by, 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 by subject or database by, databases by title, right. So if you're following along, you can go to the education search interface. So it's under education and curriculum planning. So the education search interface will search five education databases at once. So hopefully you're already familiar with that and have used that a bit. Stacy, when you go downstairs, is going to talk with you more about searching. So I'm not going to go into that during my session. Education search interface, yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry, we weren't quite with you yet. No, that's okay. It's a little slow. From it may be with everybody on. All right, and if you're ever on one of these database screens and you want to see exactly what you're searching, if you click that show all, it will show you which databases you're searching at the moment, um, especially if you're in one of those search interfaces that's searching a, a group of them. Okay, so the reason I wanted you here is so that you can either sign in to your EBSCOhost database or if you haven't set one up yet, you can create one. So if you haven't set one up, you'll click that create one now. If you already have one, you can sign in. You can sign in with Google or with your username and password. Let's see if I remember what mine is. And do write that down because I'm notorious for forgetting what passwords are. Um, <laughs> oh, I got mine wrong. And we can just sign in with Google too, though, right? Yes, yes, you can sign in with Google. Sorry. I have too many passwords. If I lose this notebook, I'm shot. Okay. <laughs> Anybody need help with that, with getting that set up? I just want to make sure everybody has this. So what you can do with that EBSCOhost account is it will allow you to save things to a folder. You can save articles and ebooks. We're going to look at that today. Um, but you can also go in and set up your preferences. So once you're into your account, there's a preferences tab at the top on the right. So two of the main things to look at here is what your citation default is. It will still show you all of them in the drop down menu when you click on the site feature. Um, yeah, there are, <laughs> there are a lot of different ones. <laughs> yes, so you can set that default. Preferences and then your default format for citations. Also, where it says export settings, the default should be set to RIS. Um, I do recommend leaving that unless you are saving to another format, because we're going to talk about Zotero in a minute, <laughs> and that's the format that uh, is used for that. So 
So I would just check those two things right now. You can always go back and play around with your, your preferences. But um, So setting default format to APA and then export settings to RIS. Yes, you'll want to save. Yes. <laughs> okay, um, so let's do, uh, like I said, I'm not going to go into searching, but yes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, the, under the preferences. And then under where it says print, email, save. I was just saying to set your default to the APA style and then set your export set. The export settings should default to RIS. You shouldn't have to change that. I think I think that's what it defaults to. But um, I would leave that at least for the time being until you decide if you're going to use a different format. And then you would just save if you made any changes there. Any other questions on that screen? Okay. Um, let's do a practice search just so I can show you a couple of things. What is a current trend or buzzword in the education world? What should Personalized we show? Personalized learning. What was it? Personalized learning. Personalized learning. <laughs> Personalized learning. All right. Let's we'll see what we get here. Okay, so the reason I wanted to do a search is not necessarily to look at the search items right now, but just to show you how you can set up alerts. So you're going to be working with your topic for a while, I assume, writing this dissertation. So um, you can always, you know, go check in and search every week, but you can also set up an alert so it will let you know when there is new information on your topic. So when you have done a search and you're on this first search screen, if you click on share, you'll see in the middle there where it says create an alert. And then you can go in and you put your email address in and then you choose your frequency. How often do you want to be notified of this? So, you know, once a week, once a month, um, you also choose, you know, do you want articles from the whole last year or just the last month? And then those will feed to you. And it will be based on the, the words you just put in. Right. Yes, that's a good point. It's going to be based on what you have searched. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's a good point. So before you set your search, you want to – let me go down to cancel there. You'll want to make sure – if you're going to do any limiters – for your search, you want to make sure you've done all of that before you set your alert because yes, it's going to pull based on the exact search screen that you uh, string that you have in there. So your full text, your peer review. Yeah. So if you want to go ahead and limit for academic journals or peer reviewed. So if we accidentally did one, how do we get rid of the one that we just did? If you accidentally did a limiter or a, an alert. So if we accidentally did a um, alert without um, putting limits to it. Let's see. Um, I think if you just click it again, email alert right there, it will, you can go down the bottom and click cancel alert. Right there, cancel alert. Will that work? Probably. I forget because I haven't done that in a while. Um, let's see what's under advanced settings. Yeah. There should be a way to go under your account and see what alerts you have set. That's what I'm looking for. Let's see under update my account. No, oh, that's not what I want. Let's see. Uh, oh, okay. Here, click on your, if you click on your folder, and then it should show you what alerts you have set. So click on folder and then search alerts. And, you can undo that. and then I think, yes, there you can delete them. Yes, that's where it was. Yeah, so when you click on your folder, it will show you articles, ebooks, things that you have set. And yes, you can check your, your searches there. So if you want to stop a search, you can do that. Yeah. 
Okay. And again, um, you can save to your folder um, articles or ebooks from, um, so going back to the library page. The two main companies that we get databases or ebooks through are EBSCO or ProQuest. So I'm going to show you how to set up folders and accounts for each of those. So as far as our ebook collections, I believe that one's labeled EBSCO, but just to show you what you would be able to say. Yes, yeah, so this one is labeled EBSCO ebook collections. So those are the ones that you can save to this folder. But again, you see, I, since I've come in through a different way, I would need to sign in again. Always make sure you're signed in before you add things to the folder, because if not, when you go back, it won't be there. And would, yes. And do you mind, so EBSCO ebook collection, we click on that and if we see a book, that's the one that we can save. Yes. To, oh, okay, yes. That. No, that's fine. That, feel free to ask questions at any point. I'm fine with that. Okay, so anything from an EBSCO database, anything from our EBSCO ebook collections, you can save to this folder. Okay, any questions on that one before we move on to ProQuest? And leave that open, leave that EBSCO page open. We may come back to that in a bit. Okay, no more questions on that one. How many of you have set up a, the ProQuest, my research folder? Any of you done that yet? Okay, just one, okay. Same kind of process. Um, let's go to the ProQuest. Um, since we went to that other one from databases by subject, let's do this one, databases by title. You can search for it either place, but we'll go to ProQuest this way. So let's go to ProQuest dissertations and theses. And like I said, our two main companies that we work with are EBSCO and ProQuest. So what we have from ProQuest are the dissertation and theses global and also eBook central. So those eBooks you'll be able to save to this folder. And when you, want, when you go here to search, you can choose if you just want to search for the dissertations or if you want to also search ebooks at the same time. You can search one or both, either or. So um, for this one also, if you haven't already created an account, you'll want to do that. So if you click the sign in, if you haven't created an account, you'll go here to create my research account. And again, I recommend writing that down because I inevitably think I've made it the same and I will have something different. <laughs> but we'll see if I remember what this one is. I have all these saved on my computer, so I'm spoiled. There it is. It does have a note on there that at some point this year they're going to switch over to email address being the username. So I don't know if you want to set it that way initially because um, I'm going to have to change over obviously at some point. The password is what I'm getting. Yeah, I've just noticed that message coming up over the last month, so I don't know when that's going to start. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm giving you trouble with setting up usernames for some reason. Did it let you use your email address? No. 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 Okay. Special characters. Okay. All right. Yeah. I don't know what their deal is with that. But then they're going to. <laughs> yeah, then they're going to switch over. They like to keep us, keep us changing. This is, yeah, it's called, ProQuest calls theirs my research account. It's just two different companies. So I want to make sure you have both of these set up so you can say that's your company. Is it good? Oh, it is now. So if you're already into your account, this one also has preferences. There's an account that says, I'm oh, sorry, a tab that says account. <laughs> and if you click on that, it's going to look like it wants you to sign in again. But if you click on the right hand side of the account tab, there's a preferences page similar to what we did with the EBSCO one. And this is the place where you can choose your citation style. Okay, so I clicked on account. The account tab and then preferences on the right hand side. So again, that's where you can go to set up some customization. Um, the only thing I would recommend changing right now is the, the citation style if it's not already set for APA. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> you might want to set it to English. I think it defaults to English, but it didn't. Okay, well then, yeah, that would be helpful to set it to English unless you have another first language. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, you're, you would use a Chrome browser, so it would probably keep. Well, some of those things in the other database came up in Chinese. Yes, they do. All right. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Sometimes that's accurate, sometimes not. So again, you'll be able to save things. Um, oh, I haven't chosen anything to say yet, but you'll be able to save things to your folder. Um, you'll be able to see your searches and your alerts. Let me show you how to set up an alert for this one. Am I going beyond? Are some people still trying to set up? Does anybody need help still with setting up account? Or are we okay? To me? I don't want to run off if you're still. All right. So what's another? What should we search this time? What's another word? What was it? Mega church retention. Mega church retention. A odd there, right? Still odd, doesn't it? Well, mm -hmm. I was just expecting education, but let's see what we, we were. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. I forget y'all have those topics. Sorry. Oh, my brain was not there. Okay. Mega church retention. All right. <laughs> All right, so I just want to show you here, you can also save your search and alerts. Again, like the others, you would want to go ahead and set any limiters beforehand because it will save your exact search string. So save search or create alert, which you actually want to do there. And so you can give that search a name, and then you can set up how often you want this, um, and also when you want it to stop, because you probably don't want to get these alerts forever. Can but we print these? Print your search? No, print the, like, the dissertations that pop up. Because I tried to get yes. something earlier, and I couldn't get it to work. So I don't know. Oh. Um, I don't know. Um, 
You well, you can download the PDF and then you should be able to print the PDF, I would think. When you want it to stop. Yes. Yes. So if you're on. <laughs> Yeah. Are we having connection issues? And then we save all of it. Thank you. Can we No. Um. And I don't even know if you all, you have to set, you have to put money on an account. It's set up through IT, through paper cuts. So it is 10 cents per page, black and white, 20 cents for color. <laughs> Might want to read that one on screen. <laughs> Okay, so again, so to this folder, you'll be able to save any articles from this dissert, I mean, this dissertation database and also from the eBook Central, any um, books that you save. So, um, if there's a, if you're with just one article, It does seem to be slow. Oh, well, actually so opening things. Okay. I clicked on that one to see if it would open up, and it seems to be slow. <laughs> oh, there it opened up. Yeah, the articles are being really slow, but I'm opening up. Um, might just be something with our internet connection right now. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> All right, so under, if you clicked on one of the dissertations, you see there's the site feature that you can copy and paste. Of course, I give my usual disclaimer. It's it's not always correct. No, I would say it's 50-50. So capitalization yeah. always, yes. <laughs> yes, but yeah, I usually say go ahead, just copy and paste it. At least you've got the elements. You can rearrange them yourself. Usually all the elements are there that you need. Um, but there's also the save button and if you're going to export to any kind of a reference manager then you're going to want to use that feature so um, I'm going to show you Zotero next and like I said for Zotero you would use the RIS format so if you're going to export or save um, that to um, actually let me go and show you Zotero and then we'll come back here and that'll make a little more sense so if you go back to the library website, libraries under academics, and then scroll down to the bottom. Probably you've been to our citing sources and APA format <coughs> guide. If not, I'll remind you that it's there. Mm -hmm. So um, there's an overview on APA style, in-text citation examples, and references examples but that's not what I'm here to show you yeah so I went to the library website sorry if I'm going too fast so this is the Rickman library page and then I just scrolled down to the bottom and I went to citing sources and APA format we have several different things linked from this page so what I want to show you is the Zotero link from there so Zotero, the reason I'm showing you that is that it's free. And it, it, what it is is a browser add-on. So if you download this, I'm not going to walk you through that today because it's different depending on which browser you use. But um, once you download it, then you will see, let me see, let me pull up an image here. 
Um, no, that's not what I'll let. Um, in the exact picture I want but once once you get Zotero you you'll have something up here in your browser bar that you'll be able to click on if you find, come across something you want to save so it can it's not just limited to our databases if you come across research other places you know a website or another um, database that you have access to you can save it there so is that the same thing that Mendeley does Yes. Okay, so yes. We've already been exposed to Mendeley. Right. If you're already so using something term. else and you're comfortable <laughs> with that, yes. I just wanted to show you a free option if you don't already have something that you're using. Yes. There are a few different ones. Um, so Zotero you download based on whatever your browser is, whatever browser you're using. And then it, it creates a library for you. So if you have if you have a Zotero library set up, it'll look something like this. The items that you put in there will be in the middle. And then if you click on one of those, the details will be on the left hand side. I'm sorry, the right hand side, right hand pane there. So and like I said, I'm not going to walk you through that because it is going to look a little different for each browser, but I just wanted to let you know that's there. So um, I put the, yeah, I put the website on your page if you want to go back to that later, or you can link through our um, site there, citing sources in APA format. So I just wanted to let you know about Zotero. But yes, if you've already started using some other reference manager, then it works the same kind of way. So this is just an option for you, not something you, you have to, to set up. Just wanted to let you know that's out there. Alright, um, but going back, so if you, let me show you, if you do decide to use Zotero, and I'm not sure what um, Mendeley uses as far as this, we'll have to look that one up, um, but going back to EBSCO, let me get back to my searches here, um, if I were pulling up an article and I found something that I wanted to save, there are a couple of different ways you can export. You can either go through the site tool. From the site tool, you can click here to export to bibliographic management software. Does it list? It doesn't list Mandalay on there. So I don't know, I don't know what format that uses. You would want to check on that to see what format you would need to use. Um, Zotero uses the RIS format, um, and then, well, actually, I don't, didn't need to save that one, but you can also just click on export. That's probably the more direct way to do it if you're just exporting the citation and don't need to see it. Site lets you see the, the citation export just directly, sends it to whatever reference manager you're using. So you would need to choose the <coughs> format depending on whatever you decide to use for that. So that's what it looks like to export in EBSCO. And then if you're in ProQuest, you would want to click on Save if you're going to export, Export Save. And then you would choose um, RIS if you're using Zotero. Um, again, I'm not sure what the others use. Those of you who have y'all, how many of you have used Mendeley? Have you actually played around I, with it I've enough? I've used to... it. I think it's really easy because that icon just sits up there in your toolbar. Okay. And so I don't have to necessarily go and put it somewhere right then and there. I can right. just click that little icon. It goes into a library. I was just showing um, mm -hmm. Todd. My library is not organized, but it's everything that I've looked up that I thought that might be interesting later on is in there. And then I can go and organize the files later. Right, right. And that's how Zotero would work also. You would have that icon. That, that you could click. It would be up in your toolbar. So um, same kind of thing. But you're not, you don't know what format that one uses. Have you looked into that? I don't know what you mean by format. Um, it's, it's how the citation would be formatted to send the file to, I'll, I'll look that up. I'll, I can find I that out. I open if you want to come and look at it. Is there a link to get 
the written in library so we can just automatically no no um, but you can you can directly export from any of our databases you know, yeah. yes so here's right, my right. Right. Oh, export into yeah. yeah. so these are all the files I don't know how to explain this one here. I'll, I'll research that and get back okay. to you with that. So this was the one that we all, if you're in cohort two, we were required to use for research tools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that right, right guys? Yeah. I haven't moved away. I just haven't used it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, then you might want to look at both because yes, they do the same thing. And that is that one also true? Yes, it is. Okay. Also. Yeah. So they do the same thing. So I would say look at them both and just see whichever one makes sense to you. And um, you know, because you're gonna have to to use it. So choose whichever one's easier for you to work with. And then Dead words folders. Okay, any questions on either of those folder systems? Okay. Um, while we're here, let me just show you one thing. Um, I opened up this um, yeah I opened up this dissertation um, just want to point out one of the tabs here is references and I know you all know that you can look at uh, the sources that they used um, to put together a paper and follow this backward but you can also follow citations forward so looking at where a paper has been cited can lead you to more current research so um, for this one, you can see um, the papers that were use it, used, but then look at what that was cited by. So does that make sense? So you're, you're looking at a paper, but you're looking at who has cited that, and you, that's going to be more current research. So it's a way to look ahead and, um, and see. Yeah, so kind of following, kind of following the bi bibliography both ways, if that makes sense. Yes. So I clicked on the references tab. Okay. And then for each one you can click on cited so by. So these are the references from that paper though, right? Um see best practice of that that's the paper you have open, right? Yes, best practices, best practices so is the one I have open. The the, all of the references that are on that dissertation. And then, so if you wanted to know where the current one you've got open had been cited, you would need to go back to, and it should be there. Um, to your search page, like your original search If it page. has been cited, right. yes, it should be. Cool. Let's we'll see if I can find one. That's yeah, awesome. I see what you're saying. Um, let's see. Let's see if any of these. Uh, Are you thinking they're too new to be cited? Could be. 2016. Let's see. Let's try a different topic and see. Oh, here. Here's one. So, yeah. Sorry, I just missed that. Yeah. So there you can see. Yes. Cited by. Yeah. 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 So just other ways to kind of follow that that conversation and and see you know maybe somebody took it a different direction you you hadn't thought of or that author hadn't thought of. So just might be a good way to get some ideas there. You. You're welcome. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Questions on any of those tools so far? Sorry if I ran through some of that kind of fast. Any questions on using the folders, exporting, um, and Zotero? I know we didn't go into much of using that, but I just wanted to let you know that's there. Um, if you click on down, we've got some different pages here um, that link to different things about um, Zotero. So 
um, but I don't want to go into that in depth because I know some of you are already using different things. Um, and again, it's going to look a little different depending on which browser you're using. Um, but there are some helps there on, on collecting and organizing your sources. Okay. Um, hopefully by now you're getting pretty comfortable with APA citing, but I do want to go over a few details. Um, as you put together a longer paper, you've got a lot more to keep up with. So um, one of the things to always make sure is that what you have cited in text you have on your references page and vice versa. That seems like a really basic, simple thing, but as you get into your longer paper, that's more to keep up with. So you just want to keep an eye on that. Um, also, uh, just some basics I've got here on your paper. I don't need that anymore, but um, I just put some basics on here to always include author and date. Hopefully by now that's second nature. Remember to include page numbers whenever you have a direct quote. That's just a question I get asked a lot. Why, when do I put a page number? You, you want a page number when you have done a direct quote. And you don't when you don't. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You don't when you don't. <laughs> you don't when you don't. And then the next things that I included on here are what to do depending on how many authors you have. Because yeah, often when you're yeah. doing a short paper, you don't think about that. But as you get into a longer paper, that's something you'll need to track. So I just put some, a general guideline here. With one to two authors, you're going to list their name, their name, name or names for every citation. So if you're citing a paper that has one author or two authors, you're going to put those names every time. There's no at all involved with that. If you have three to five authors, you're going to list all of those authors, the first citation, and then afterward, anytime you cite that same source again, you're going to just put the first author at all. Maybe a comma at all or just first author at all? Just first author at all. And then comma date. Yeah. And there's just a period after the all, the A-L. <laughs> right. Okay. Not after the F. Um, and then six or more authors, you're going to do first author at all every time. So you won't list them all except for in your references page. In text citations, you'll always do first author at all. And again, that's, that's just something that you maybe haven't done a lot in writing shorter papers. So I just wanted to, to make sure to point that out because that is something you'll need to track as you're doing this. Of course, you know, using a computer, <laughs> It's very easy. You can search and see where you have that, that same string of authors. You know, it's, it's an easy thing to check, but just reminding yourself to, to check for it. Okay, and then creating your references page. Again, remembering anything that's, that's in text needs to be on your references page. Anything that's on your references page should be cited in text. So you'll want to keep track of that because if you, if you decide to remove some information, you want to make sure you also get that off your references page. So, so just always double checking both of those. And, and then I just put some examples on here. Again, hopefully by this point, you're very comfortable with doing a, a book or an article citation. So I just put a general form for that. But I also put a dissertation example um, because um, I've not really been happy with what ProQuest spits out as far as um, right. dissertation <laughs> uh, example oh, citations. So this is the basic, you know, of course, hopefully you all have this manual, if not yet one. This should be your, your other Bible for the next few years. Um, so, so this is, the example is in here. I'll even give you the page number. Um, page 207. <laughs> as an example of a doctoral dissertation or master's thesis available from a database. So we've got, we've got, this is the APA publication manual. Yeah. Six, yeah, make sure you get the sixth edition. Yeah, so if you don't have one of these, make sure you get the <laughs> Yeah, good question. I heard, I heard anything about the seventh edition, but. Um, is that slow in the school? We don't actually have a bookstore. We have a campus oh, store. Oh, the, oh, not unless your professor has listed it for a oh, course. 
Yeah, I th I got a used copy. I think on Amazon for twelve or fifteen dollars or something. So, because I wanted my own copy, I could mark the things I go to frequently and highlights and um, so yeah. So you definitely want a copy of this. Um, yes, I mean I put some other helps on your page. Of course, Purdue Owl is great, um, but it's not the original source. Purdue Owl is kind of explaining this book. So this is this is the original. Um, I also reminded you about our citing sources libguide, um, the one I took you to to find, you know, the link, the link to Zotero. Um, we've got a lot of good sources there, um, but this is always the original to go back to. Um, if if there's something, now, not everything's in here. I mean, the, you know, the, not everything is addressed that you might have. So um, the APA blog, style blog, is really good. It's very searchable. So when I get something quirky, like how do I cite poetry or how do I, because there's really nothing in here about finding poetry, which I guess, you know, social scientists and scientists don't cite a lot of poetry, but um, I've had that question <laughs> from a student. So when I get quirky things like that, the APA style blog has been really helpful just because it has a great search feature and I'm able to go and see, has somebody else asked this question before, you know, the community at large will answer. and so. Um, that's that's been a really helpful place if you have something. No, sorry, I didn't put that one on here, but yeah, yeah, if you just Google, no, sorry, my one dropped that one down. Um, just followed that, but yeah. APA style. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, DOI. Yes. Mm -hmm. Some have it and some don't. Yes. I know that's, that it's the online identifier, basically. So. If even if it's given, put it. If it's not, don't. But does it have to be put? Yes, if it is there, put it. Okay. Yes, because uh, that is what um, the articles are going to as far as an identifier. So you should find that more and more common. Okay. So yes, if there is a DOI, definitely put it on there and don't put any punctuation after it. Um, if not, then yeah. No, it's not it's not there but yes if there is a DOI definitely put that on your your citation yeah. other questions yes sir headings within a page uh, bold <laughs> center bold uh, flush oh. italicized oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right there. <laughs> right. yeah they're all in here I'm sorry I do not have those memorized but yes you, you yeah for the whole section headings but yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have those. Okay. Those are not quite all the way in my head, but yes, you'll have to look at the different levels because each level has a different way of formatting them. Have you been showing I can probably send you a draft from this email. I'm not sure if I understand that. Yeah, I'm not sure if I understand that. So one thing that has come up about is with the block books, it's over 40 words in this block. And then in only, the only one I found on this is Alfred Alfred. Um, like they have, they're talking about the author beforehand, so they have the author and they have the year, and then they have the quote and then the page. Um, but I'm not talking about the author beforehand, which I've already talked about. So, do I still put, I mean, would I just put the author yeah. Yeah. where, right, yeah, where they have, yeah. where they have an age, just extend that, and yeah. that yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it also, and I try, and just didn't fit, I try to read it a little bit, and I'm like, that just doesn't look like it, yeah, okay, cool, yeah, yes. okay, okay. Um, if we're using an article, mm -hmm. and, that we got on this, yeah. right, do we need to include the web address? Uh, I will defer to your professors on that, but what I'm hearing from most departments is no. If you got it from our databases, you cite it um, because you know they're able to go and search our databases, and someone outside our institution is not going to be able to use that link to get back to it. So I don't know if you guys want to. Yeah, you know, the only one that you would really include is a permanent link. Okay. Um, other than that, you know. Um, we don't have to include. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
question. If I find an article, say through Google Scholar, and it's a PDF, do you include that one though, correct? Yeah, where the PDF is located. Okay. okay. So that's sure. a web source. Right. Yeah. Because I would say I didn't get it from yeah, something outside of database. Database. So, if it, but if it's still like an article, maybe it was linked to another college or whatever, include that address information to where they could copy paste it and pull it up correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Unless, well, I mean, if it's an institutional database, generally, unless you have access, you're not going to be able to link. I mean, so someone's so going to be able to I've found certain articles mm -hmm. um, that you click the link of university has done it, but it okay. comes up as a PDF. Gotcha. Okay. So yes. it doesn't direct yes, you, you through, through their stuff. Yeah, you can put that in a retreat from okay. yeah. Let's see what we're asking. Yeah. Other questions? Okay. All right. That's all I have for you for this session.